So my first introduction to biomimicry was at the Feather Pipe Ranch, just outside Helena, Montana. Meeting up with 15 other students embarking on a two-year study of this emerging science, our leader, Dr. Dana Bymaster, was getting ready to take us on an exploration through this beautiful forest. And right before we went on the walk, she said something that changed how I viewed the world. She said, engineers destroy places that biologists hold sacred. And as I walked through that forest and thought about my life's work as an engineer, I wondered, what does she have against bulldozers and cement trucks? Even though the work I had been doing, building water and wastewater treatment plants, cleaning up Superfund sites, and helping industries reduce their pollution loading and in, in chemical use, it was only making current environmental systems less bad. Would it be possible to completely change the game around how humans live on the planet? What kind of innovation would that require? And where would we find those ideas? Well, innovation is the oldest process on Earth. The planet has a set of processes and operating conditions that have been fine-tuned over billions of years. We live on a planet where life is subject to a state of dynamic non-equilibrium. This means that conditions on Earth are always changing, and only those organisms that can adapt and evolve to those changes are ones that survive. But humans build systems that are rigid, and when change comes, they often collapse. We've all seen the effects of fire, flood, and drought. But organisms on this planet have been conducting a research and development experiment for over 3.8 billion years. They have figured out how to do everything that we want to do as humans, and yet do it in a way that fits into Earth's operating conditions. So what if we looked at that 3.8 billion years of R&D? So organisms face the same challenges we do, and yet have sustainable strategies that we can use in our own designs. What if we embraced their wisdom? Biomimicry is the conscious emulation of nature's genius. And by conscious, we mean that we actively seek design ideas from the natural world. And emulation means we don't just copy what nature looks like, but we understand the deep design principles that nature uses and apply these to our human designs. And nature's genius recognizes that after 3.8 billion years of evolution, nature has figured out what works and what lasts. So how is biomimicry done? Well, we're conditioned to think about products, something you buy on Amazon. And of course, you want it to be the best product you can. Let's take an air conditioner, for example. So you ask a designer or an engineer to design the best product possible, a sustainable unit, one that's locally sourced, use reusable materials, a low energy unit. But biomimicry doesn't look at products. It looks at the system's function. So when we identify the function we want to achieve, which is a verb, not a noun, then we can ask the question, how does nature regulate temperature? Only one organism on the planet builds and installs air conditioning units, but almost every organism on the planet has a system to regulate temperature. Architects, working with engineers and biologists, took inspiration from passively cooled termite mounts to design the Eastgate building in Zimbabwe. Mimicking the cooling strategies of termites, this 300,000 square foot office building is passively ventilated and cooled. It uses 90% less electricity than traditional office buildings while keeping the indoor temperature inside comfortable for its users. Air conditioners? I'm not a fan. So let's look at a couple other examples. So the hardest substance we've ever made as humans is Kevlar. And Kevlar is made by taking sulfuric acid, mixing it with petroleum products at high temperatures for several hours, and then using high pressures to fuse the molecules together. And yet spiders are able to make a fiber stronger than Kevlar using dead flies and water. Cast University 
has mimicked the strategies of spiders to make a strong fiber without toxic chemicals or high pressure and heat. The Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in Colorado had a desire to eliminate plastic drink bottles from the landfill without installing an energy intensive recycling program. Working with local biologists, we formulated the functional question, which was how does nature provide portable hydration, and discovered ways to eliminate 90% of plastic drink bottles from use. Looking at local models, we discovered that no organism climbs the dunes in the hot part of the day, yet this is when most visitors do. So by changing the timing of park service events, like hosting afternoon talks under shade structures instead of in the morning, we reduced the need for hydration. And because we looked at the whole system, we discovered that 90% of visitors don't go more than 40 feet from their car. So we didn't have to provide portable hydration very far. In 2012, the city of Boulder, Colorado was looking for ways to resurface their trails and roads that were devastated by a thousand year rain event. Engineers and biologists worked together to look at local models like dragonfly wings and elk bones to get inspiration to discover a way to create a sustainable, locally attuned surface coating. We know the way a system is designed and built is the way it operates. Engineers build systems that last hundreds of years, so we must influence this discipline if we're to find, build sustainable systems on this planet. We all drive cars, for example, because we have such a great national road system. Here in Helena, Montana, the investment that we've made in hiking and biking infrastructure supports our outdoor lifestyle. We need to expect innovation from our engineers and bring a biologist to their design table and embrace failure as an important feedback loop. Innovation is, takes trial and error, so we must appreciate this cycle, accommodate it, and encourage it. We need broad systems approach to problem solving, and fortunately, universities and colleges are offering courses in biomimicry thinking and multidisciplinary teams. Right here in Montana, engineers are bringing biologists to their design table with beautiful results. For example, the city of Bozeman, Montana installs permeable pavement wherever it makes sense by asking the question, where does the water want to go? Or where does it need to go? Instead of where do we want the water to go? And similarly, Instead of making wildlife in Montana play Carmageddon, the SUV version, <laughs> engineers and biologists are working together to ask the question, what other organisms need to travel through this landscape? And help out by installing animal bridges where it makes sense. Where in your community could you invite a biologist to the design table? Where should you? Where will you? And will you invite them out for a beer afterwards? Using nature as our model, biomimicry gets design ideas from nature. It's a new science that studies nature's designs and apply these to our human designs. Using biomimicry as measure is a way to test the rightness of our design. That is, if no other organism is doing something, should we? It's designing side by side with the natural world. After 3.8 billion years of trial and error, nature has de determined what is appropriate, what lasts. Nature as mentor suggests we can learn from her and not extract from her. Organisms in every ecosystem provide their fair share to support the systems that sustain us. What is our contribution? Remember, nature doesn't need people. People need nature. When we design side by side with nature, we too can say that our designs create conditions conducive to life. So we are nature. We're a very young and very unique species. In order to mature, we must quiet our human cleverness, to listen, to emulate, 
and to give thanks for all the knowledge that nature is ready to share with us. Thank you.